Eternal God, our Father, we are so grateful and delighted to be in your presence. Father, we come with hunger and thirst. And Father, you said that he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. And Lord, we want to be filled with your joy and your spirit. And Father, we pray that you will speak into our lives. And we pray that if there is one here who is struggling with afflictions, we know they're in the right place because you're the God of all comfort. And by your stripes, we are healed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. everyone. I hope you're all just great this morning. Um, it's delightful to be here with you. Um, I love this church and uh, my, my love for it grows. You know, isn't it funny? Um, is that happening to you too? Good. I've been coming here for lots of years. And uh, my husband and I came, we've been, well, he has passed away, but uh, we came uh, 20 years ago, and we started coming here, and I just can't believe how, how, how much this church means to me. So I just thank you all. And the more I get involved, the more I love it. Yeah. Uh, and the more I get to know you, the more I love the church. Um, this is not an advertisement for volunteering, although, <laughs> although I do highly recommend it. Um, and I, you know, there's some things I'm noticing in my life. Lately, we have had encouragement to look for ways that God cares for us and protects us. And not to think that it's a, 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 just a coincidence, but it's his actions in your life. We've heard the lessons of hope that come from a relationship with Jesus Christ and the contentment that that brings. We don't have to worry about the future. The future is in God's capable hands. We have also been reminded that, not, that, oh, 
Only our creator God could have made this beautiful, wonderful world. It happened by his design. Lately, I've been focusing on thankfulness. I am so grateful to be living in the villages. And I know you all feel the same way, because I hear that from people. Um, I'm so grateful for the beauty that surrounds us all the time, and the people who tend to that beauty. I took my grandson over to Montgomery Lake the other day. Immediately, we saw a mommy and daddy goose tending to their six adorable goslings. They were the first I had seen this year. And in fact, I haven't seen a whole lot. I think maybe I've seen 14 total. Um, now, those of us who play golf don't really like the mess they leave, but you cannot deny that they are absolutely adorable. So we walked over near the lake, and we delighted in so many turtles, my goodness, basking in the sun. And, and um, we took a little closer look and saw this enormous school of fish. I don't know where they come from. And those fish were at least six, inch, six or eight inches long altogether. That's, that's really, if somebody threw in a few little minnows, they've done a, uh, they've been some growing going on. Uh, and then a very tall lady walked over to see what we were all appreciating, and she struck up a conversation with me. Well, I was so happy with that connection. It's so funny how things happen. Um, she was very, very friendly, and she had so much to share. I mean, she didn't know me from Adam. Um, uh, and then I discovered she had known my husband. She had been a PE teacher in the Oak Grove School, in the East Side High School District, for her whole career, and she knew him. Well, I loved having his memory brought up. And I was so thankful. God is good. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 reminds us, in everything, everything, give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen, Amen I agree. Um, I want to, uh, you, maybe most of you know, I'm not sure, but we have a darling person in our church, Cindy Drew, who has been in the hospital, and I, many of you, I'm sure, have been praying for her all week. And, you know, I miss her. She's not sitting in her spot over there. And we all kind of have our spots. We're, it's so funny. I keep thinking, well, why doesn't everybody at least take up the first row? Why do you like sit in the back? But anyway, we, we have our little row over there that we sit, Cindy Drew sits with us. Last week, um, she wasn't there either, and I sat in a row, and there were four Susies right next to each other. It's so funny what happens in church, you know. Anyway, I am so delightful, delighted to be here this morning to be worshiping with you and appreciating the words that God has for us to hear today. Um, and uh, I, I hope you will continue to keep Cindy in your prayers. She is still in the hospital, had major surgery, and uh, needs our prayers. So we will, we will continue to do that. Let's see what's next. Oh, announcements. Well, no, these are beautiful. I don't know. I think the Catholic group uses more money or something. But look, <laughs> look at this. Look at the size of that. It's, 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 it's a beautiful bouquet. We can enjoy it. Um, and now for announcements. Um, next Sunday, Pastor Bill, yay, will be speaking. Um, and then there will be on Saturday a service for dear little Kathleen Levin, who many of us remember with her horn and, and her bells. And, you know, um, she was just a wonderful person to us. And her service, her celebration of life, is next Saturday on May 4th at 2.30 in Vineyard Center, and you're all welcome. And um, then we, oh, oh, I know her. Um, on, on, on Mother's Day, we will have a special speaker, Pam Wood will be here. So that will be really special to have her also. Um, 
okay, I've done announcements. I thank for the flowers. Uh, <laughs> that was my next job. Are we going to sing now? Let's hope we get to sing. It's my pleasure this morning to introduce a gentleman from City Team. And City Team is who we have been supporting the last few weeks with things that we've brought from home, canned goods and clothing and whatever. And um, I hope he tells us when City Team started, because they've been around for a long time. So please welcome Austin Reagan. Good morning. Um, thank you for having me. Um, 1957, we started. <laughs> uh, 1957, we actually started as a little uh, just food distribution to the unhoused guests downtown on St. James Street. Um, now we have grown tremendously. Like I said, last year we're in five cities now. Um, but I just want to start off by saying thank you so much for everything that you have brought in to donate to City Team. Uh, all the clothes, all the food, these things are going to go directly back out to our community, free of charge to them, so that they do not have to worry about the financial insecurity of providing clothes for themselves or providing the next meal for themselves. There's no worse feeling than someone going to the grocery store and having them ring up the food and say, you know what, I need to put back 10 items. You know, we, we don't want, as a community, for anybody to go through that. We don't want a, a child to go to school and him get bullied because his clothes aren't up to par with everyone else's. Or he's growing out of his clothes so fast that his single mom can't provide the clothes that he needs. So what we do, we have started uh, with pop-up closets 
all around the Bay Area that we bring clothes to. Now, these pop-up closets have started with uh, our food distribution first. We've brought food out to, to churches, and we partner with them so that we can get into their community or community centers or just low-income neighborhoods. We might go to the entire apartment complex and set up and, and help them uh, with that food insecurity first, with bringing them food. But then as we're diving deeper into what is causing their hardship or their just insecurity at that moment, we realize clothes, shoes, household items are a huge need within these communities. So what we're doing is now that the, we've, already, we've already won their heart over by bringing them food. You know, we, we've already got the food in their neighborhoods. So now we're able to, uh, like, you, like you guys brought uh, clothes in. So we bring those to our warehouse. We have volunteers that come down, sort out all these clothes, put them by gender, size, everything like that. And then we load them up in our truck and bring them straight out to the community. And then they are able to shop free of charge and have that ability to say, thank you. You know, it, to see a single mother, see a single father, to be able to see their kid just come back running with pure joy. Look at what I found. Look at these shoes. Can I have these? And the parents saying, yes, of course. That's why they're here. You know, seeing uh, someone who's just been struggling for so long, they may have lost a loved one, they may have lost the breadwinner in their family, and all of a sudden they didn't know where they're going to turn and have that ability to say, wow, I didn't realize City Team had so much to offer. And then that opens up that door of why are you guys doing this? And then that's when we're able to introduce God's love in what we're, our whole foundation is built upon, is discipleship, making disciples of others. So if we're able to finally open that door, we've brought them food, we've brought them clothes, now they're asking why. This is why. God has told us to come out and make disciples of other men. He has asked us to come out and provide the love that Jesus shared. And as Jesus died, he said, Disciples, take my love and share this, multiply it. Multiply it as much as you can. And that's what our whole goal is, is multiplying Jesus' love so that people know that there is good and there is love in the world. Because so often we turn on the news, we so often we hear somebody talking about there's only destruction going on. No, if you really dive deep into it, there's so much love just in our communities that we want to share, that we're trying to share. So... That's, that's one part of what we're doing right now is really the clothing insecurities, the food insecurities, and just helping out our neighbors at no cost. Because that, you know, if, if, and bringing it to them helps them so much because they don't have to get on the bus. They don't have to get their four or five kids on a bus or figure out where we are and, and make it, you know, make that time. Bring it straight to where they're at so they don't have to worry about that. Um, so the next thing... You know, when I say in discipleship program, I talked last year about a lot of our residential programs, um, people going through uh, addiction or just uh, a lapse in life. They just need a restart in life. I want to be, you know, so proud to say in just the last month within these residential programs, just in San Jose, we have had 20 people give their life to Jesus and get baptized in Jesus' name. People like... <laughs> And this is anyone, you know, these are kids that came in with their mothers. These are mothers. These are also men who came in the program. They see, you know what? I am ready to end my old life, put that life to death, and now follow Jesus and understand what that means and then make a disciple of myself to go out and share that also. So that just is a huge thing. Not only are we allowing people to get off the street or in their addiction, they're finding God and they're bringing it back to their family. You know, their ripple effect that they had so much, the negative ripple effect that they had on their families during their addiction, just imagine now with God's love in their life, the ripple effect on a good, positive note. You know, I was listening to a story yesterday from one of the men. We had a power breakfast a fundraiser for our men's program, and he was sharing, five years ago, his family wanted nothing to do with him. Now, because of him going through the program, finding God, he is now sitting in church with his five family members who had never stepped foot in church before, all because him as the father 
has made this life choice to turn his life over to God, and now he's going to church, and they're now not only on talking terms, but sitting in a pew together, going to church, and learning what he's learned already. So this is just a huge like testament of what City Team has to offer. Um, so, like I said, we have volunteer situations. I, I don't want to follow up your volunteer opportunities, but, you know, I, I really encourage you. You guys have already been a huge volunteer by bringing down the clothes, bringing down the food and stuff. If you guys ever want to come down, come down in a little group, and you can volunteer in our warehouse to sort these clothes. Or if you want to go out and, and meet some of the ones that we are, you know, bringing the food or bringing the clothes to, we'd love to have you down. But also, I'd love to encourage you know, 10, 15 of you or so, if you want to come down and just do a tour, I would love to get with you guys, do a tour, and you guys are able to see, you know, their women's program or our men's program or, you know, our warehouse, our food truck, things that we're offering so that you guys can see directly, firsthand, who you are helping. Because that's such a powerful testament to be able to have that firsthand knowledge of not only giving something, but then seeing where it goes or seeing how it's putting put into place. So these are just awesome opportunities. Also, with um, we have graduations coming up this month. Um, if any of you guys are you know want to learn more about that, these are graduations from our residential program that you can come down and hear some of these stories of people that were broken, hit rock bottom, and now they're graduating with a job. They may have got their GED. They're moving into their own place. They've got their family back in their life. And just to hear these stories of people getting back on their feet, back into life, and learning how to be an adult finally, you know, these are, these are stories that are so powerful, and I really encourage you guys to want to come down and, and, and do this. So like I said from the get-go, I, don't want, you know, I just want to end this with, Thank you. Thank you so much. You guys have come through so much because the clothes you've offered are going to help people have that confidence to get back out to the work world. You know, have that confidence to put these clothes on and go to that interview and say, you know what, I'm ready to tackle the world again. I may have not had a job in 10 years, five years, but you know what, I'm confident enough to know that I'm going to get this job and then I'm going to have the clothes to go and retain this job. And then I'm going to be able to go and wear this outfit to church. Or I'm going to be able to go and wear this outfit to see my kids for the first time in seven years. You know, these are, these are stories that, that, you know, start off with food, go to clothes, go to confidence. And then, you know, like I said, all this boils down to sharing God's love and, and replicating what Jesus did for us many, many years ago was share love and make disciples. And that's what we're all about. So thank you for, thank you for having me come out. And I just want to say thank you again from all the city team and everyone that we serve. It's now time for our silent prayer. So if you would bow with me. Do you usually have them stand? I'm in charge. Just, in, just sit there and enjoy yourself. Uh, uh, remember um, Cindy and remember others that you know who are suffering and need our prayers. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. And we are so grateful that he's always there to listen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we are so grateful. We thank you that you hear our needs. You know them before we even need them. And Father, we do lift up those that we know and love and ask for your special touch to just come upon them and give them a real peace, a sense of you being there. And we just love you and are so grateful. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we're going to sing. <laughs> what? Um, as it seems so appropriate with everything that Austin was talking about for the afternoon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>
Good morning. Feeling good? Are you being good? <laughs> we serve a good God. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we lift our hands and our hearts before you. And Father, we place no one before you because you are a sovereign God and you are everywhere at the same time. And Father, we pray that not only will you bless Larry Frediani and Tess, Lord, we also pray for Cindy and thank you, God, for the healing process that's going on in their lives. Lord, what would we do if we didn't have you in our lives today? And Father, we are so grateful that you place us in family as it is appropriate in your scheme of leading us and guiding us. And Father, we ask for your anointing upon each and every person. And Lord, as you have taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is nearly to the heart of God. And we're just waiting for it to go. <coughs> Thank you. Solidity.
Father God, we pray your blessings on this offering. May it be used for the propagation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray that you would bless those who have given out of their need and those who have given out of their abundance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So, so good, and 
If I can do it, you did it. You did it. You did it. You did it. Because you asked me. Thank you. You did it. There are no tissues. I'll use this. You just don't know. You just really don't know. You have no idea. The depth of God's love for us. We can curse him. We can ignore him. We can deny him. We can rebel against him, but he just keeps on loving us. Yeah. All he ever desired for us is his goodness. Yeah. He never wanted us to ever be ill or afflicted or sick or die. All he ever wanted from us is our love for him. And we withhold it. We never hardly say, Lord, I love you. We hardly ever say, thank you for forgiving me and coming into my life and giving me purpose for living. We just go right along as if we are in control of everything. And if you listen to some of us, it's as if we created everything. Thank you, Austin. Thank you, Minister Mark and Margaret and Susie. You're on the prayer list and we pray for you. And for all of the volunteers and all of you who are here this morning, it's a special day. And we're all Together, what a miracle that we're here, that we're representing the body of Christ, the glorious body of Jesus Christ, the mystery of adoption that we become heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ because of his death and his burial and his resurrection. And none of us are any better than anyone else. We're all broken. But he mends us together. Hallelujah, somebody. 
I'm so full, I want to speak in tongues. <laughs> if I could. But God is worthy of your praise and thanksgiving. How he watches over us and he protects us from danger, seen and unseen. And we just go happy through life, not realizing that we just escaped a great danger. And we complained because we were late. We didn't know what was ahead. And God allowed us to escape tragedy. You know, I thought about as I was meditating on communion, I'm not going to preach the message that I have. You can wait for that one. But this is what God put on my heart. How is it that we can be near Jesus for three years and see his works and feel his spirit and his love and compassion for others. And when he needed us most, we give him up for 30 pieces of silver. What is it in us that would betray him? That we would put other things in place before him. Judas did that. And we think, how could you be in the presence of the living God who's walking in flesh before you and he is showing you God's amazing grace? And you give him up. Was it envy? Was it pride? Was it greed? Was it jealousy? What was going on in Judas's heart? When he had an opportunity to have a most intimate relationship with him, and you know what I discovered? And any one of us could have been there to give up Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. What it was, Judas didn't make him his Lord. Is he your Lord? Or are you willing to give him up for some pleasure some, he gave him up for 30 pieces of silver and he couldn't even spend it. Couldn't enjoy it. We come to this table of remembrance. Remembering the greatest gift that God has ever and will ever give to humanity. His son that he would die and cover our sins so that when God looks upon us, he sees Jesus in us because the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit, our greatest and number one enemy is the devil, the father of lies and deception. Is Jesus your Lord? Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that he gives to them what he had received from the Lord. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he sat with his disciples and he gave them a new commandment. He broke bread with them and he said this bread, after he blessed it, and broke it and says, this represents my body that's given for you. 
And he gave them the blessing of the cup. He says, this cup represents a new covenant, it's a covenant of my blood. And he had them to share it together as one. But Paul said, because there was a problem in Corinthians, that people were not observing the Lord's body and blood. They were just having fun and overindulging and not being considerate of each other. And he came hard against them. He says, let a man examine himself. So this is a moment of examination. Is Jesus your Lord that you're willing to lay down your life for? That you're willing to sacrifice yourself for others to know Jesus Christ. Father God, we sit and we stand and we pray that you would examine our hearts. And Lord, we pray if there's any wicked way in us, Lord, deliver us. Cleanse us. Restore the joy of your great salvation that we might be ecstatically happy over where we're going to spend eternity. Bless us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to ask our service to come at this time. You can come directly to the table. Come directly to the table. Father God, we bless this bread that is symbolic of your body that was broken for us. We pray that you would anoint it. And Lord, as we partake of this bread together, may we be united not only in body and in spirit, but in thought and in deed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless the body of Christ. 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 We'd like for you to hold your element so that we can partake together. coming upstairs.
Receive the body of Christ. 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 Father God, we lift this bread that is symbolic of your body. We take this in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for your blood that was shed for us. The word of God says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remissions of sins. Thank you for covering us, Lord. Further, we thank you for valuing each one of our lives and your desire for us to spend eternity in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Cover the people with the blood of Jesus. 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 grape juice as a representation of the body of Christ. We will, we will drink together. I don't know about you, but I feel the presence of God. He has touched me this morning. I don't know if he has touched you, but check your body as you leave out of this place and see if you feel a release from God's. Thank you. You are covered by his blood. 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 Father God, we lift this cup in celebration of Jesus Christ and his imminent return. In Jesus' name, drink all of your cup.
Praise God. That wasn't just to hear me praise God. I said praise God. Praise God. Don't withhold praise from him. Amen? You can withhold praise from each other, but don't withhold his praise by all means. Be free to praise the God of your salvation. I feel a hundred percent better than when I first came in this place. And we all ought to feel 100% better when we come into the presence of God. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, where the Spirit of the Lord is, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let us stand to our feet. I'll give you a closing blessing and the choir will give you the benediction song. Father God, I thank you that you choose weak vessels for your glory and for your honor. And Father, I pray that you will use each one of us for the furtherance of your kingdom. May the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest upon each one. And Lord, may our light so shine before men and our love for each other that they will know that we are the children of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, Amen, and be blessed. Amen. I surrender.